Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to compare Visa and MasterCard stock and see which one is a better investment right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. This channel is all about investing, so if you're into that kind of thing, please hit that subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. Okay, so we're all familiar with Visa and MasterCard. We probably have one or both of them. They're used for transactions across the world. Both companies have something that I love to see in a business model, which is, as more and more people use their services, their services become more valuable. So as more and more people accept Visa or MasterCard, it becomes harder for your business to say no to it. It's accepted everywhere. In addition, both companies are very much not capital intensive whatsoever. This means that before I even look at their income statements, I have an expectation here that they're going to be earning very high profit margins because they really don't have much cost of sales. So both Visa and MasterCard are giants in the payment processing industry. Visa has a market cap of about $450 billion and they're a tremendous growth company. As you can see here, if you invested in Visa in say 2009, you could have bought shares for $12.50 it's now trading at $210. That's not even including the dividends you would have received. MasterCard as well has had a similar rise. And they're both currently trading at very high multiples. You look at MasterCard, a price earnings ratio of 53. And for Visa, it is 38.8. Now, as a value investor, I hate the idea of paying close to 40 or 50 times the company's earnings especially companies whose market cap is already over $400 billion. It's hard to believe they have much more room to grow. However, we have to keep in mind that looking at the price earnings ratio is really just an initial step in our analysis. If the data shows that the company is likely to continue their growth, it could be a tremendous deal. We just have to see. So let's just compare their international exposure. Here you have Visa's revenues by region, and it's a pretty even split between US and international markets. MasterCard, on the other hand, is more focused on international markets, accounting for about 64% of their revenue. If we compare the balance sheets of the two companies, we find very, very similar current ratios and quick ratios, close to two. This indicates that neither company is in immediate danger of any kind of liquidity problems. They both have positive working capital. Now, if you don't know what these ratios are, they're in the description below. The major difference is the total liabilities to total assets ratio, which lets you know how leveraged the companies are. Here is a stark difference. MasterCard is much more leveraged compared to Visa. The next thing I want to do is a DuPont analysis, where I look at arguably the most important measure of company profitability, return on equity or ROE, and break that down into its three components. If you don't know how this works, check out my video on DuPont analysis in the description below. It's a quick one. But I put up four years worth for each company because in any given year, a company's profitability may fluctuate. We just want to see the overall picture here. What I see here is that MasterCard is able to achieve a much better return on equity compared to Visa. And that may be why MasterCard commands a higher price to earnings ratio right now. Now, when we look at the different components, uh, one thing strikes me uh, very clearly here, and that is asset turnover. So for every dollar of assets in place, how much do you generate in revenue? And for Visa, it's a very steady, roughly 30 cents. Every dollar of assets they have, they can generate 30 cents. MasterCard is much more efficient, generating close to twice that every year in the past four years. In addition, MasterCard has a higher equity multiplier. So they're really using leverage to achieve this higher return on equity and also more efficient use of assets. When it comes to actual profit on what they sell, net income margin, for every dollar of sales, how much do you keep for net income? Actually, the companies are, are pretty similar. And in fact, Visa has a superior net income margin in many of the years here. So if we take what we saw on the balance sheet, and combine it with a DuPont analysis, one thing becomes abundantly clear. MasterCard is a much more profitable company, and one of the reasons that is, is that they are higher leveraged. So I would expect MasterCard to offer a higher return at a higher risk. 
The next thing to talk about is dividends. Now both companies offer a very pathetic dividend yield, less than 1% for both companies. However, look at their growth rate. If you look at the, they've grown, look at Visa. They've grown their dividend for 12 years. The average growth rate for the past 10 years, cumulative annual growth rate is about 25%. For MasterCard, it's about 36%. This is incredible and this is why a lot of people are interested in owning these stocks. So here we have the amount of money Visa has paid out in dividends over the past four years as well as the amount of money they have put into buying their own shares back. Both of these are a way of rewarding shareholders, either giving them directly cash or buying their own shares back such that the shares remaining become worth more money. So even though the dividend yield is very low, uh, this company is not taking the rest of the money and having to reinvest it like a lot of the big tech companies where they, they have a lot of money reinvested back in R&D to keep up. No, this is not the situation here. Visa is actually paying out a lot more than it looks like. They're really a cash cow, guys. And we really have the same thing going on with MasterCard. In fact, their share buybacks are really increasing every year as well as their dividends. So this looks like a very nice situation if you ask me. Can the situation continue? Well, for Visa, definitely yes. Their payout ratio, which is the dividend divided by their profits for the year, is usually less than 20%. They can very much afford to keep paying out this increasing stream of dividends. And their modified payout ratio, which means I'm taking the dividends plus all the money they spent buying their shares back divided by profits, it's just touching 100% in the most recent year. And again, we had a bad year there. It's usually 80 or here's 74%. So they can very much afford to keep doing this. When we look at MasterCard, the situation is even better. The dividend payout ratio is extremely low, probably averaging around 17% or so. And the modified payout ratio is also pretty good, usually around you know, 80 or 72%, jumping up in this year because we had a bad year which really could be a great thing, you know. We don't know exactly when MasterCard bought their own shares back, but we had quite a price drop with all stocks down in March, and if they bought them back at that price, that's a great investment for the shareholders. Okay, so to decide whether each company is a good investment or which one is better, we're gonna use a free cash flow to equity model. We're gonna say the value of each stock is gonna be equal to the free cash flows to equity that we're gonna receive in the future. Whatever the total of those is, each one has to be divided by one plus a discount rate to a certain power so we can discount it back to present value. You can write it shorthand like this. We're going to have to apply the model with this third equation here because I really can't use the first two equations. I can't forecast cash flows for the next 25, 30, 40 years, however long you expect these companies to be in business. That's an impossible task. So what we'll do is we'll try and figure out what's the free cash flow to equity this year? What do I expect it to then grow by for the next five years? And after that, I will just assume that it's gonna grow at a very low rate, some kind of stable growth rate, and that will determine my terminal value at that point. If you, have, if you want more detail, check out my video on that in the description below. So to make the free cash flow to equity model work, I have a discount rate. I'm gonna try several different rates here because that, that discount rate is very hard to estimate. And I wanna see how sensitive the value is to different rates. And then the free cash flow to equity growth rate, which I'm going to assume can anywhere from 14 to 17% for Visa. Uh, the analyst estimate on Seeking Alpha is about 15%. So you can assume that this column is the most likely uh, you know, intrinsic value for Visa, depending on the discount rate you want. Remember guys, an alternative way of interpreting the whole chart here is to say this, if Visa grows at 15% and I, I wanna get an 8% return per year, I should be paying no more than $163.73. Uh, so you can see the different values here, depending on how optimistic you are about that that free cash flow to equity growth rate and what discount rate you choose. What I have down here below is essentially how much of a discount or how much of a premium are you paying for the stock given its current share price today of $210.35.
So what we see here is under the most optimistic assumptions about growth and the lowest discount rate, we might be getting as much as a 27% discount on the stock for Visa. But you don't see a whole lot of boxes that are colored green, meaning, you know, overall, it doesn't seem like Visa is a great deal right now. All right, so turning to the valuation matrix for MasterCard, I'm using slightly different growth rates here. One reason is that MasterCard has an estimated growth rate in their net income of about 17.5%. So I'm going to say, okay, anywhere from 16 to 19 is reasonable. Uh, using that methodology, you can see the different values for MasterCard. Remember, their share price is about 336 bucks right now. Uh, so if we turn to the matrix below, we see that given that current price, MasterCard is a good deal as long as your discount rate is either 6 or 7%. If you want to earn more than a 7% return, you know, you want 8 or 9%, uh, it becomes not a good deal. And I would point out this, even for MasterCard, it's only a really a great deal if you assume a 6% discount rate, which may be too low given MasterCard's leverage compared to Visa's, remember? Even at a 7% discount rate, even though the boxes are colored green, look at the numbers. It's not that much of a discount. I also like to look at insider trading activity because remember, the executives and the board of directors, these guys certainly know a lot more than we do about the near future performance of the company. Here for Visa, we do see insiders in the past three months are mostly selling. Same with 12 months there. Let's look at the number of shares involved. And what I can see here is in the last three months at least, nobody has bought any shares. Uh, you have about 60,000 shares being sold. And here the last 12 months, the ratio is not great at all. Looking at MasterCard, the situation doesn't look much better here. We got two insiders buying in the last three months and 25 insider sales. And turning to the number of shares involved, we see the number of shares bought is rather small compared to the number of shares, shares sold there. So in the past three months and the last 12 months overall, you've got tremendous downward pressure by the insiders. So if they're dumping their shares, what does that tell you about MasterCard? All right, guys, so here are my final thoughts. Again, the first thought I always have is that you should hit that like button. I think that would be a great idea. Okay, but seriously, Visa versus MasterCard. Well, I have to pick MasterCard. Even though it commands a higher price earnings ratio right now, it clearly has a stronger growth rate going in their earnings, and they're taking much better advantage of their resources with their higher leverage. So they are a little bit riskier, but at the end of the day, I have to ask, how risky are they? I mean, their business makes money as long as people buy things. I don't see that stopping anytime soon. So on a comparative basis, I much prefer MasterCard over Visa. However, I have to say that after running the numbers on the intrinsic value models, it doesn't seem like either one is a very good deal right now. Again, I love their business. They have a moat. It's going to be very hard for some other payment processors to encroach on their business. And they don't have to invest a whole lot of resources every year in R&D or any kind of factories or anything. they got a beautiful business. They make fat profits every day. But having a great business and being a great investment are not the same thing. We have to care about the price we pay for something. And when you look at how much each one is expected to grow in the near term future, you have to start getting pretty optimistic to say it's a good deal. You know, you look at some of these values in the valuation matrix and you say, okay, if I assume a low risk, low discount rate and a, a growth rate that's a little bit higher than what analysts are forecasting, then this could be a good deal. You don't want to get into that situation. You want a little margin of safety. I want this to ideally to be a good deal even if analysts are a little bit optimistic, even if they don't grow as quite as much as we think. That's not what we have here. We have a situation where you've got to be optimistic to think that this company is going to be a good investment. So again, I love the business, but come on guys, there's a lot of stocks out there in the stock market. You don't have to buy every one you see. I'm just going to pass on this one. Those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Hey, see if I'm missing anything here. Uh, hit the like button if you like it. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.